Peace and love, everybody. Peace and love. Can you hear the birds outside? If it's too loud, let me know. I'm so glad you're here. Peace. I'm going to put this down. Standing up today. Change the lights. Try to hold, make the whole thing a little different today for me. It'll bring a little more energy. So peace. Namaste, everybody. I'm Peter Panagor, a two-time near-death experiencer, ex-TV and radio broadcaster and ex-clergy. And welcome to Not Church. And I want to say hi to everybody. Let's see who's here. Hey, Betty A, Quiet Energy, David, J. David, Barbara, Anne, Andrew, Brother Ed. You don't need to listen to cars. Kristen, Wanda, Tom. Hey, Tom, neighbor. Candyman, Mary, PL, Mary S, and Jay. Hey, thanks for being here today. I got to let you know something. Um, and if you're live with me, you can chat here in the chat uh, in our community and maybe ask question, questions at the end of my offering. And please let me know your thoughts in the comments if you're not here live. I appreciate it. I would like to know what you think, because after all, I'm trying to help you find your way home on the interior. And I'm also thanking everybody, because sometimes people do give super chats during my offering. And I want to thank my friends for those ahead of time. So last week, following 20, last week, following 20 years of non-attendance, I officially resigned my membership from my local congregation, settling this malingering tie with the liberal United Church of Christ, about which I only have good things to say which ordained women in the 1930s and gays and lesbians in the 90s and has been about social justice for a century. Churches filled with good-hearted people. But unfortunately for me, they lacked mysticism and they had theology. So how about you? Have you left some spiritual path and you're looking for something? Well, here we leave behind doctrines, dogmas, and any Bravo Sierra, because this is a children's show. Not really, but YouTube doesn't like swearing. So any Bravo Sierra. This is mysticism on a global scale and trans-religious through storytelling and scholarship. What matters most is training the mind in silence. That matters most. At once minute and individualized, and simultaneously one with a capital O in being with a capital B. Simultaneously one in being. We are consciousness inhabiting body. And yes, I use a teleprompter. So today, in 1468 words, we'll continue to explore the enigmatic, 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 oh my enigmatic, enigmatic. Oh my God, I knew I was going to stumble on this word. <laughs> gospel of Thomas, the confusing Gospel of Thomas, 38, first found in 1945. And you're going to discover its striking similarities, as we often do here, with Hinduism, Buddhism, Sufism, today Kabbalah, Gnosticism, and even the biblical teachings of Matthew, John, and 2 Corinthians. But Jesus is more than what they've led you to believe. And remember that head knowledge is essential, but heart wisdom, noetic understanding, is the pathway to home. Make yourself susceptible to experience. The only way out is in. The wisdom, capital W, lives inside and is you. Seek and you will find. Join us on Mondays and Wednesdays for teachings from the ancient mystical geniuses, a little education, spirit-led, centering meditation, and breathing practice. 30 minutes to quiet the mind and learn to listen to moments of silence. Like and subscribe. Not Church is a niche. So thanks for being here. All my friends, thank you very much. Jimmy, Mai, Lee, 
or me. Jimmy, me, Lee, Lynn. Amen. Thanks, everybody. So before we dive in, let's chant some ohms together aloud, three of them, allowing our selves to train our brains. That's what this meditation stuff is all about. Training our brains to settle in and clear our minds, opening our hearts to experiencing the vibrational presence of the inner light. Also, sometimes a prayer chant helps focus the mind in meditation. Moving today, move your mind up and down your spine. Ride your brain, ride your mind, ride your breath, ride your prayer up and down your spine. And we're going to gather together and the energy is within and between us. This is as Yeshua taught. Mystical Jesus isn't who you think he is. Thomas 38. All right, that's the title. So let's uh, spend a moment here. I'm going to get a drink of water. Now, I'm going to stand with my feet shoulder width apart because I'm standing to chant. I'm tucked my pelvic thrust, it's called pelvic tilt. Sorry, pelvic tilt. I, it, and um, Well, well. Um, that's what you get for ad-living. Feet fed apart, locked onto the floor. My muscles are tension at the below half of my body. I'm going to breathe into my belly. I'm going to fill my abdomen, put my hands down, cup this mula, actually, this one here, mudra, rather. Mystical Jesus isn't who you think he is. Thomas 38, in four parts, from mystical literature. Introduction. Picture this. Part one, a riddle wrapped in a mystery. Part two, a journey through time and space. Part three, timeless wisdom for today's hustle and bustle. Picture this. You're strolling, <laughs> you're scrolling i can't even read right picture this you're scrolling through your news feed overwhelmed by the world's chaos and suddenly you stumble upon a trove of ancient wisdom it's like finding a hidden gem in the midst of the mundane what if i told you that it is the key to a more meaningful life that was hidden in plain sight, nestled inside within ancient mystical texts. There are gems there and keys there. Well, buckle up, my friend, because we're about to embark again on this adventure through the magical landscape of ancient wisdom, including the enigmatic Gospel of Thomas. We'll discover how these teachings can guide us toward our own self-awareness, our own inner peace, and a purposeful life. Now, part one, the Gospel of Thomas, a riddle wrapped in a mystery. The Gospel of Thomas is like the eccentric cousin of the New Testament, full of cryptic sayings attributed to Jesus. One particular passage, Thomas 38, offers a wealth of interpretation that can be both perplexing and enlightening. Many times, you have desired to hear these words which I speak to you, and you have no other from whom to hear them? 
days will come when you seek me and you will not find me. Do you ever have times like that? From this mind bender of a passage, we can glean four principles that can help us be guided and navigate in our daily lives. The importance of being present and attentive. The inner search for the truth. The transient nature of the physical world. The challenge of spiritual seeking. Part two, a journey through space and time. Now, let's take a whirlwind tour through the mystical texts of various traditions where we'll find the same principles echoed in different ways. Hinduism. The Bhagavad Gita is like the ultimate self-help book with Krishna guiding Arjuna through life's most challenging questions, including the transient nature of the physical world and the eternal aspect of of the soul. Buddhism, the Dharmapada, Buddha's ultimate guide to life is all about mindfulness, self-awareness, and embracing the impermanence of the physical world. Sufism, Rumi, my beloved poet, and Hafez coming in a close second, the original poets of love, beautifully express spiritual longing they speak for me. Maybe they speak for you. They express spiritual longing, the transient nature of the world and the importance of divine love and their mystical poetry. The Kabbalah, the Jewish mystical tradition, uncovers hidden meanings in sacred texts, exploring the interconnectedness of creation and the importance of spiritual growth and divine wisdom. Gnosticism. Gnostic texts, like the Gospel of Thomas, are all about looking within for divine wisdom and understanding instead of relying on external practices of religion. Part three, timeless wisdom for today's hustle and bustle. So, how can these ancient principles help us in our daily lives? So, I'm going to break it down a little bit. Cultivating mindfulness and presence. Being present helps us enjoy the small pleasures of life, like a perfectly brewed cup of coffee or the sound of laughter. As Jesus said in Matthew 6.34, Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry enough about itself. Each day has its enough trouble of its own encouraging self-reflection and self-awareness. Regular introspection can help us become the best versions of ourselves, avoiding misunderstandings and fostering healthier relationships. Proverbs 4.7 advises, Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get understanding. Wisdom is the principal thing emphasizing the transcendent nature of the physical world, recognizing that everything changes. Every change that happens can help us let go of our attachment to the material possessions and appreciate the beauty of the present moment. Matthew 6, 19 to 21 reminds us, don't store up for yourself treasures on earth where moths and vermin destroy, where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where no moths and vermin can destroy anything, and where thieves don't break in and steal. For where your treasure is, heaven, there your heart will be also. Nurturing inner growth and spiritual development. Meditation or contemplation or contemplative reading can lead to a more profound sense of purpose and connection with the divine. Matthew 7, 7, 8. Encourage us spiritually to seek. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you'll find. Knock and the door will be opened. For everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds. The one who seeks finds. 
to the one who knocks, the door will open. Knock. Incorporating these biblical verses, which resonate with all of the principles discussed today in this essay, emphasizes the teachings universality and timeless relevance. Ref. Yeah, relevance and timeless relevance. Moreover, furthermore. By connecting ancient wisdom with the teachings of the Bible, we can further appreciate the transformative nature of these global principles in our daily lives. Buddhism, Hinduism, Kabbalah, poetry, Gnostics, the Bible. And by incorporating these principles in our daily routines, we can experience inner peace, contentment, and a deeper connection to ourselves and the world around us. So let's embrace these ancient teachings like a treasure map, leading us into the hidden gems of self-realization and inner growth. Headwork. Doing so can inspire others to join us on the journey, making the world more compassionate, enlightened, and joyful. Heartwork. After all, who says ancient wisdom can't be a breath of fresh air in today's hustle and bustle? You can carry this into your individual lives on a daily basis. You don't have to say anything about it. You just have to carry it with you like a breath. It's like stumbling upon a, a vintage vinyl record that still plays like a dream. So... Tune in, turn on, turn up the volume, and let the timeless truths of mystical literature guide you through this symphony of your life. This make some sense from the chaos by going within, because you can't control the outside, but you can control what's in here. And remember, life's too short not to bother with this, to dance to your own beat. So thanks for joining me today. And I want to talk about yesterday as I ironed a shirt for a funeral memorial service. My mind was running on and running on and running on. And I wasn't paying attention to what I was doing. And I wasn't really where I was. I started chanting inside my head, my prayer chant, just over and over and over and over again. I let it rise up from the subconscious and I brought myself completely present to the ironing. And then the ironing actually was kind of cool. I ended up ironing a pair of pants from the inside out, and I learned a bunch of things about pants construction that I didn't even know. And um, by being present to where I was, I learned about who I am. I learned about who I am because I was silent and listening inside myself, being present to the world. So please, and thank you for being here. And please like and subscribe. And if you've ever found any value here, thanks. And if you felt the presence, which is really what this is all about during our time together, through your support and charity and spiritual counseling and intuitive understanding office hours, they genuinely keep me going. So these things, your help and all this stuff help, keeps me going. You can join us at the top of the hour at Mystic Tea Salon. You can see the link below. It's for mystical conversations in a private, safe, and welcoming community. Humility, kindness, and compassion are at the heart of our gatherings. So I feel free to lurk or participate. On Mondays and Wednesdays, we have our Sangha. We meet for meditation on YouTube. And on Tuesdays, we gather for a little bit of mystical poetry, some more insights, some additional techniques and Kriya on Zoom. And if anyone in the chat room attends these events, please share your experiences so that others may learn from you. What valuable insights, I ask you, did you gain today? Let me know in the comments. Visit me at Peter Panagor for more, peterpanagor.love. I'm wishing you peace and spiritual growth. And don't forget about the Mystic Tea at the top of the hour. Thank you, Sylvester, for the super chat. Uh, that's very kind of you. If you have a question for me, uh, maybe drop it in the super chat or or just drop it in the, the feed there. So I hope this was helpful to you. Let me know. I really need to know if what I'm doing is gives you value. Like, like, is it helpful to your spiritual growth? This is an experiment again. So I'm standing up today. I'm, I'm trying to bring 
you know, change this a little bit, kind of bring some more energy to it. I'm learning as I go, but I need to, I need some feedback. So let me know. I appreciate it. Um, Martha, so glad to hear your voice in my earbuds. There's chaos in the room around me, visiting family, peace. Well, that's kind of cool. You're listening in as you're, as you're finding your center inside yourself. It's what somebody once said, if you want to know how enlightened you are, spend time with your family. Glad you're here, Martha. Barbara, yes, this is very helpful. Thank you. I do. I really do need to know because I, I want to be able to provide something that is useful to you, useful spiritually, heart, useful in your head, and useful in the world. And and that's my goal. And tell me what you think about me standing up. You like this standing up thing? You like this sitting down thing? What do you like? I feel I feel a little more fluid here. It's going to take me a while to get used to it. I'm probably going to uh, start tweaking my my uh, essays more. I think of them as essays. And so I'm going to maybe, I'm, I'm working on that. I'm working on the writing and this stuff. Sylvester, thank you. This is awesome. Thank you, Sylvester. Thank you. I appreciate it. We're a small group today because I made another mistake, even though I had did all this other stuff. I forgot to take it from private to public after I finished designing the whole thing on Thursday. My mia culpa, mia culpa. Where's my whip? Um, anyway, hey, Betty, always look forward to this. Never disappointed. Thanks, Betty. Uh, let's see. Saw the movie Guardians oh. of the Galaxy. Rocket had an NDE. Oh, I have to see that. Rocket had an NDE. I'm a fan, of course, of Marvel. I don't know if you know that. I've been following since I was a kid. Marvel comics, a big part of my life, especially when my brother started buying them and I got to read them all through college. He paid for them. They were always oh, great. He has a huge collection. Thank you, Kristen. No, no intellectual insights, but lots of spiritual experience. Oh, that's good to know. Thanks, Kristen. That's good to know. Um, let me know how I can, uh, do, do I need intellectual insight? I mean, help me with that if you can. I appreciate that. Logan, this is very helpful. Thank you. Sitting or standing, the words to think about and grow. Thanks, Robert. Uh, and uh, I'm all about critique too. So you can't hurt my feelings. I want to learn. That's my whole life is about learning. I'm a learner and I want, and you're my teachers too. In terms of family, I am mostly an outcast due in large part to whatever enlightenment I have going on. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I am considered called uh, a fool. Wanda, I'm so sorry to hear this, but this is the natural way of things in the world. There is there was a, a, a children's uh, storyteller from New Hampshire, I believe he passed away recently, called Tommy De Palma, and he had a book called Fool for God. Clown of God, clown of God, maybe the clown of God. And uh, yeah, I've identified as a fool for a long time. Um, <laughs> I identify as a fool, I, a clown um, deep inside myself uh, because in, in part, because that's the way the world sees us. Not practical, living in the ethers that they can't touch, that live inside them and they'll see for themselves. So they're going to see for themselves um, the moment that they die. And there's no way they can avoid this. I'm I'm glad you're here, Wanda. This ship of fools. Maybe I should name this show the Ship of Fools. Um, this is where the truth is. Capital T says J. I don't know another NDE. -er. I don't know where another NDE -er is doing the good work to support the people. Well, thanks, Jay. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to do the good work to support the people so that we can work through this together. Thank you, Jay. Thank you, brother. Kristen, uh, no intellectual insights necessary. There's plenty of that in the world. Okay. All right. Not enough spiritual experience. That's what you bring. So, so not church is kind of like a, I'm trying to make not church into a vehicle for the experience thing. I needed, I needed, a, I needed material. The, the, how do I explain this? The, the media consumes material. The feed the monster is, was the saying in television. You got to feed the monster. You got to have something new. Got to feed the monster. I needed something to feed the monster. So not church and these intellectual explorations are a way for me to feed the monster, but they're not the message of the monster that I'm, <laughs> and the monster is a happy smiley face monster. Um, the, 
I'm really trying to send the energy. And uh, that's really what I'm trying to do. And this is a vehicle for that. I'm uh, trying to feed the head because a lot of people are up in their heads. I'm kind of up in my head too a lot, but really I, I'm in my heart mostly. Uh, so let me know, uh, as Kristen did, and I thank you, um, and, and uh, help me improve. Help me improve to do the good work because I, even though I'm not in the church anymore, <laughs> I still work in community. Um, I'm gonna, let's see, where's my mouse? There's my mouse. Thank you, Kristen. Very helpful, Peter. I too have had problems with revelation versus revelation. Must be the ADD thing. <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, revelation versus that other word that I can't pronounce at the moment because revelation's in my mind. Um, yes, AD, uh, I know. It's a curse. I And I, I ran into a whole bunch of old friends yesterday. Uh, my buddy, Pat, um, I was a newer buddy of his uh, the past 25 years. But um, anyway, he passed away about a year ago. And we had a big celebration yesterday. And I forgot everybody's name in my town. I was like, oh, my God. Yeah, ADHD. Much. Yeah. It's ADHD. And uh, it's also dyslexia in my case, which is part of the word thing. You're welcome, Wanda. Ship of Fools. Triple plus. Uh, Wanda, just keep letting your light shine through, says Logan. And that's really what the key is here. You just keep letting the, line sh the light shine through. You get up, you st and that's what the meditation is. You're stepping out of the way. You make an empty space for the light to shine through on its own. That's, that, that's what that's true, Logan. Thank you for saying so. Then I agree, Kristen. Honestly, there's more peace. Thank you, Lynn. Honestly, there's more peace this way. There's a pretty conflicted lot at Logan. Yeah, that's right. I see what you're saying. I have the energy today. Good, Tom. I'm feeling it too. I'm feeling it too, Tom. But it did hurt. I'm sorry, Wanda. Yeah, well, you know, even if you're a fool for God, you still have feelings. I still have feelings. And yes, I still can be hurt. Um, but I, then I dive inside myself. I remind myself of who I am. I go back into the place of listening. And there I find my strength. And that's why I retreat all the time. That's what this whole, you know, living in the age of civilization here on the edge of the continent in a rural state, on a rural place in a rural state is all about for me. I, I'm, I, I, want, I, I want to drive myself inward um, to uh, soften the hurt of the world upon me. And you can do this. I do this primarily by going inward and touching into this place deep inside myself to where I am, who I am, where I'm from, not naming it, not holding it, but letting it sit, letting me sit in it by getting out of the way. That's what the silent listening is all about. And it can be used on a regular basis in the daily life. And it, and it helps with the hurt. To bear fruit, says Robert, is a type of investment in a room in Father's Hotel. Yeah, it's true. Yep. Mary S. And thanks, Mary. Mary S. Um, to me, this is my support for all the spiritual experiences I've had. Thanks, Mary. That's, thanks. And we support each other. I have recently realized that surrender isn't the same as defeat. This is true. Oh my God, Wanda. That's totally true. I never remembered that that's true. De surrender isn't defeat. Not in the spiritual sense. There's no loss in the surrendering of self to the presence of the divine. There's only gain. There's only gain more and more. That's the secret that people don't know. Jeez, I was, I was reading something about someone who never ever apologizes because they make the, they think it makes themselves look weak. And this is true in business, I guess, too. I don't find it that way. I find that surrender of myself, including apologies, 
when I make a mistake and hurt somebody, that frees me and it makes me stronger. It's just the opposite. Stay strong, Wanda. Saying a prayer for you says quiet energy. Joining you in that quiet energy. Not church is my spiritual gas station. I pull in for Sundays to fill up for the week to come. Thanks, Tom. Uh, Martha, amen, Tom. Not church is my spiritual gas tank, a gas station too. High octane. Thanks. Um, I'm looking to put in an in, in, uh, airplane fuel or something even faster. Um, so true, Wanda. Amen, Wanda. So true, Wanda. High octane. All right, my friends. I really like to keep this around 30 minutes if I can. So for the folks who come in to watch video, thanks for being here. Um, peace and love. I'll see you at the top of the hour. The link is below. Look at that. Heaven and hell. It's the same. They're connected. There's a connection there. They're all connected. Um, nitro boost. Yeah, nitro boost. Exactly. All right, my friends, peace and love. Namaste. Thanks for being here. I'll see you at the top of the hour. Sure appreciate you. Namaste.